Hello everybody, thanks for watching. If you've not already done so, I'd love to have you subscribe, and check out some of the other content that I uh, already have posted here. Um, ring the bell so you get notified when something new is available. With that being said, let's dive into it. Today I'm going to talk to you about the ISR 4K router and how you can use it as a hypervisor. Uh, so typically you're going to use a 4K router as a, you know, Ford's data plane, right? That's what the vast majority of folks are going to use it for. The hypervisor can actually run on the same hardware in conjunction with the you know typical iOS XE functionality. Uh, you can virtualize a uh, you know a Linux operating system, really whatever operating system, uh, as long as uh, you know of course it's going to fall inside of the uh, the amount of hardware that you have available to it. Um, so the router key requirements it has to be a uh, really any ISR 4K will run it, with the exception, I think, of the uh, 4200 series units. Uh, so a 4321 would work, but there's only a single core available to virtualize uh, with. Uh, the 4331 and greater has um, three cores available, that's 12 vCPUs. Uh, your unit should have at least 8 gigs of memory to, uh, to do this, right? It's going to use some memory for management and control plane as well as the hypervisor functionality. So uh, anyway, that's the, the base requirements. You should be on iOS XE 3.17 or greater. And uh, again, that's been out for some time now, so you should be in good shape there as well. Uh, the next thing, I have a, a sample virtual machine in the comments section below that you can download and use. It is an Ubuntu Linux uh, server operating system, version 18, I believe. Uh, so as of the time of this recording, it's up to date, it's the latest. I have a default username and password set. It is Cisco, all lowercase, and the password is also Cisco, all lowercase. Goes without saying, use at your own risk, and be sure to change the credentials uh, and uh, you know harden the system for your environment should you choose to use it. With that out of the way, let's dive in firsthand. I'll show you how to get the, the, uh, you know, the virtual machine loaded into your system, how to spin it up, how to network it, and uh, then go from there. Thanks for watching. Let's dive in. To get started, you actually need to verify that you have enough space. So show hard drive, or show hard disk, rather. Uh, you can see the available space when you do that. Uh, you actually see I do already have an OVA loaded, so I'll just kind of step you through how you would copy this over because it does take a long period of time. Uh, if you use the copy command in question mark, you'll actually see the options. So I copied this remotely. You can use FTP, you can use HTTP or HTTPS, uh, you can use, um, I don't know, secure copy is actually what I used, so on and so forth to copy this file this OVA onto the system. So you would just do a copy, uh, I don't know, secure copy to hard disk, and then it's going to ask you a series of questions. Now if I uh, build this out, I could do, uh, I'll just connect to my system that's running secure copy, uh, Adam username, source file, you do have to give it the full path. So um, you know, var www.html slash virtual.ova. Now, I already have an OVA on here that I'm going to use, and actually is the, OB, the, the OVA that I mentioned in the comments section. Uh, you can give it a, you know, whatever name, and then you type in the password. So in this case, I will give it the password, and away we go. It's going to start copying uh, that file over to the system. Again, once the file is copied over, you see it on the, the disk, and you're good to go. I always recommend verifying the file. So verify, and you want to do verify. In this case, I have a, uh, I have a um, what do I have, an MD5 hash for you. So you can see that in the comments section as well. And you want to just give it the path, hard disk, and Ubuntu image. It'll take a little bit of time to uh, churn out a hash of that. And uh, once it's done, we'll get the hash value. We'll know that, hey, in fact, this file is uh, you know consistent and it's a good file. It's copied successfully. So there you go. You see the, uh, the hash value there. 
So anyway, that uh, with that out of the way, what we need to do is actually set up the network for this device. So uh, I have it already set up um, in the lab here, but I can step you through that as well. So if you go into configuration T mode, there is an interface called virtual port group one. So virtual, uh, actually we're gonna need the interface command, interface virtual, virtual port group one. We wanna give it an IP address. IP address, and uh, I just, you know, have something arbitrary because this is a lab. Obviously, your environment, you might have a uh, some specific requirements. Uh, although, you do have a lot of flexibility because we're going to do IP NAT inside, and we're actually going to NAT this device, this virtual machine, to the, you know, outside world, if you will. Uh, the inside world being the hypervisor, the outside world being our network. Um, so just uh, something like that, and you want to do no shut just uh, to ensure that that interface is up and running. Uh, you can then go to interface, um, you know, whatever your your outside interface is. Mine is gig 000, and you do IP NAT outside, and ensure that it is properly configured. So we can do do show run int gig zero slash zero slash zero. It's going to need an IP address, obviously. So I have an IP address on it, IP NAT outside, and um, you know it's up and running, so we should be good to go there. We can exit interface configuration mode. Uh, now the other piece is to NAT into that. We need an IP NAT command. So IP NAT inside, which is the, again, the inside source static, and that inside address is going to be 10.0.0.0. .0 .0 two, two rather, and um, outside address is going to be uh, 201.241. As you notice, the gig interface was 240. I'm gonna use an additional address uh, since I'm gonna NAT it straight through. I don't want to uh, overlap and uh, knock myself off the network by using that address. And um, yeah, we should be good, good to go there. We can do, do show IP NAT translations as well, just to make sure that hit the uh, the table correctly, and it did. Next, we actually have to configure the virtual service information. So that's uh, virtual service. Uh, we want to give it a name. Actually, let's configure the global first. So virtual service, and then signal level unsigned. This is essentially just saying that we are allowing unsigned packages to be used since this is a package that I made myself a VM package uh, this would be a, a signed package would actually be something like um, Cisco Unity Express a Cisco sponsored package or something that someone else has built and has had signed it's gone through that trouble anyway uh, again used with some discretion of course but uh, but anyway let's move on <laughs> virtual service and we need to actually um, give this virtual service a name. We're just going to call it Ubuntu. Uh, we'll go into that mode there. We need to assign a VNIC. So this is essentially the VNIC on the virtual machine. We got to give it some information. Gateway, virtual port group. And remember that virtual port group, port group one. There's a guest IP. Actually, let me just show you the options here. If we hit the question mark, there's really not a whole lot of options. Um, I'm actually in that NIC setting now. Once I'm inside, the only thing I really have is guest IP, right? IP or IPv6 address. Gonna walk it out. This system is gonna be 10.0.0.2. If you remember from before, we set up the NAT rule. So that's the IP address of the virtual host or of the virtual system. Uh, essentially, uh, we can drop back, and again, you see the the options here. Pay attention to this option, activate. We're going to use this to set uh, this system active uh, once it's installed. If you wanted to give it a description, you can do that. Ubuntu to server VM, right? We can do that type of thing. Uh, just exit out of that when you're done. The next thing, uh, really, we're actually pretty much ready to go. Let's drop back and do a few show commands. So show 
virtual service um, global. Rather, this is going to show us kind of all the details, uh, or, or high level details rather, about the system. So infrastructure version, machine supported KVM and LXC. These are the VM types. We can see max vCPU uh, per virtual service is six. Maximum virtual limits, right? We can see some hard hard uh, stats here as far as what's um, you know what the quota is what's committed currently and what's available right so currently there's nothing running um, I can actually do a show virtual um, service let's say question mark right we can see the details uh, and we'll just do a list right there's also no virtual services listed currently so let's install this thing uh, while we do that I actually like to turn on debugging it's debug virtual services all right it's already on cool so now what we want to do is virtual services install give it a name right we can step this out we're just going to call it ubuntu 2 uh, package now this is the actual packaged up vm now we're going to install from the hard disk and we have an ubuntu ova you can step it out here. There's no media requirement for this. We can literally just hit enter and uh, you know, away we go. It's going to start the install process and go from there. Uh, you're going to see the path info with this debugging turned on. Um, kind of uh, steps through the process. Just a little bit of uh, verbose details as we go through it. All right. Once you have uh, or once the system has completed installing uh, Ubuntu, uh, or installing any OVA for that matter. You'll see a couple more uh, lines pop up from the debugging menu. You should see, it should be free of errors. You can kind of see some uh, some details here. It's checking licensing and that type of thing. This is something we built on our own, so no licensing needed, of course. Um, and it uh, actually went ahead and sent a you know connection request. Now I was logged out here at the same time, so Let's uh, log back in and see the status. So show virtual service list. We can see that the Ubuntu system is installed. Now it's not activated currently. So if we do um, go back into that config, we can actually view all the config by doing a show run. Let's pipe to section virtual and we can take a look at all this virtual config. So we have the virtual service globally uh, install and the virtual service Ubuntu. The activation command is not yet active there. So we can actually go in there, config T, um, and activate. This may take a few moments. Again, essentially what it's doing is firing up that virtual machine. This is the same way as uh, hitting the, uh, I don't know, the play button in VMware to start the system. So let's exit out of that, exit out of that, show virtual service list. And there you go, the status is activating. It does show us that it's starting. Uh, it should say active once it is fully up and running. We'll give it another moment to, uh, before we check the status again, we'll just do show virtual service list. There we go. And now it is activated. So with the service up and running, let's go back and revisit a command we used earlier. And that is show virtual service global. And we can see the resource usage. Uh, as you can see, system CPU percentage, we have a, a quota of 75%. We are using 10 of it, 65 available. Uh, see some memory stats, some boot flash, uh, and hard disk are actually clear for now. We do have a volume group, which this is actually taking up some space. This is actually part of the hard disk, so um, uh, just be aware of that. Uh, actually, if you do a show hard disk, you will see the uh, some additional files have actually been expanded. And... Um, the volume in virtual instance is where all of this is going to live. So all the Ubuntu stuff, there's actually an Ubuntu directory for all of the components 
that are part of it. The QCAL2, uh, fun extension there, that is the actual virtual disk image itself. Uh, and I'm working on another video to show the actual assembly of a virtual machine, an OVA for use on this. Uh, that link will be available here as soon as it's done. But uh, that's where the QCAL is actually built. And uh, some of this other information is built as well. There's a manifest file, there's a uh, YAML file, which is the config, so on and so forth. And you, of course, you still see our OVA there as well. So the last thing to do is actually to connect to this virtual system and, um, you know, prove that it is in fact running. So uh, with this, we will uh, virtual service, hit the uh, question mark there. You see the connect option. Let's connect. Connect name, we'll give it an, we'll use its name, Ubuntu, and, uh, you know, console. I want to get to the console. That just a second. Take note of this, use uh, Control C three times to escape. Um, here we see the, you know, live and local from the actual system itself. We have a login prompt. Again, this was Cisco and Cisco. Uh, and we're in. This is an Ubuntu system, so it has some scripts that run. When we log in, we get some stats on the system itself. This is the virtual machine, right? Uptime, uh, typical Linux uh, commands. It's up for two minutes, right? We just started the system. Uh, likewise, I have config. We can take a look at what the actual IP information is. Uh, as you can see, I have an ENS3 adapter here, 10 3. Um, Docker. I have Docker installed on here, right? So Docker dash uh, v i think will show us the version yep that'll show us the docker build uh we're up and running we have a functional machine here that we can do some stuff with <clears throat> clear the screen so anyway with the virtual machine up and running you now have uh, you know autonomy over it it's a virtual machine right you can do anything on it that you would do in linux otherwise um so uh yeah that's pretty much the the point of of all of this if you have questions I know that was a lot of steps and a little bit of confusion with some of it. It, it is somewhat of a tedious process, and it does take some uh, some patience. If you have questions, by all means, leave them in the comments section below. I hope that's helpful to at least kind of give you an idea of what's uh, what's involved. Um, there can be some tricks and, and gotchas along the way. So uh, anyway, best of luck. By all means, check back and leave some comments if there's uh, things that uh, that you get stuck on. I see what I can do to help, and uh, and go from there. So. Make the most of it, and um, thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon.